Hey guys, welcome back to the Model Railroad. Today we're going to be uh, actually doing some changes out here. I know I promised you guys a Model Railroad video and doing some work out here, and we definitely got a little bit of work to do. Uh, this video is going to be talking about putting in some new track sections among already basically finished track work. Uh, we're going to be splicing in a new section of track, and this is something I wanted to do and I've kind of talked about. And um, what we're going to be working on is actually another lead track that will be coming off our main uh, siding here and then it will be running off the end of the table here. And what this will allow us to be able to then have is the potential to also build more modules later on that will be heading westward where we can maybe have like a grain elevator scene or something like that. And uh, honestly this is something I really wish I would have built uh, originally when I put in the track work and for whatever reason I just didn't think I could add it. But after a lot of looking into and going to the real location in Fostoria, Ohio, where this track is actually supposed to be, I realized I could probably make it work if I compress it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you guys what I'm talking about, and we'll start working. Again, for anyone who's curious, this is a model railroad of Fostoria, Ohio. This location is Columbus Avenue. Uh, you can look up photos of the real location and see for yourself what all this looks like in real life and kind of see what I was going at with modeling this whole scene. Now, the track that we're talking about that we got to modify is this section of track here that comes off the what would be track one on the BNO main line heading east and then looking this direction, we'd be heading west towards F Tower. There is a branch track that comes off this yard section. It switches off from this corner, and then it leads this section of track, which I have temporarily laid out here, something like this. And it eventually leads around and then goes around a corner and then enters the NS Blair Yard that would be on the Norfolk Southern section uh, to the north here. So this track was something that is there in real life, but for whatever reason I didn't model it originally when I built this track section. As you can see, it's already pretty much seen it. So the issue here is that we got to cut track out and then remove some ballast and then blend everything back together. It's not the end of the world, and after doing a little bit of ballasting and uh, track modification and also replacing the switch, you know, it was just something I decided to do. Just go ahead and take care of it and get it done. Uh, so what we have here is the curved turnout. The only issue here is that it's very short, and it also butts up against this modular joint here, but I think we can splice the switch in if we're really careful. Uh, we'll make it work best we can here. So the switch would be here. It would be a right-hand switch. It would lead off into this connector track. The track would run along the main line parallel, and eventually there would be a little curve off here where it would actually run over this abandoned crossing section and then lead her off there and then turn around. So we're also going to have to finish the scenery here a little bit and add some trees. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the switch that we have. So the section of track is going to start here and what I have to do this is a Pico SLU7061. This is a number six right hand turnout and this is a Unifrog. Uh, I've switched pretty much all to Unifrog switches. These are really nice. There's basically no prep work. They just drop right in and they're pretty much power routed. They're good to go. So I'm going to basically be taking this out of the package and we'll just kind of look at the amount of distance that we have on that switch to get an idea of how much uh, we need to modify this section. First thing I'm going to do is take the switch, and as you can see, it's a bit shorter, so I think we can splice this in. Now, what we are going to have to probably do here is actually shorten the switch, because I want to leave as much of this curve in as possible and then connect it back into the switch. So what I'm going to do is actually shorten these switch points a little bit, and I'm also going to shorten it here, and if we're lucky, we should be able to just splice this all together, and it should work out just fine. Here's the modified switch. You'll notice that I've shortened this section of track to more evenly join in with this curved turnout. And over here, we've butted it up against that section here, where we can basically join the track together, um, <coughs> and we'll be able to blend that pretty nicely. So it actually will fit in pretty nice. And then as you can see, we've got plenty of room to join the track in on this section here. Uh, the trick now is going to be cutting out the uh, old track here. And I'm going to do that very carefully with a Dremel and a diamond bit. So here's where we've done the splice in the section of track. Notice that I've already started lifting out the rail, and I also removed these feeder wires. If I can actually zoom in on that. I've removed the feeder wires that were on this section of track, and what I'm doing now is just carefully pulling up this rail section like this in preparation to modify it. So I'm going to remove the rails like that, and then what I'll be able to do is expose the whole roadbed section, and I'll essentially be able to lift that out with a scraper, and we'll just 
try to be as careful as we can, but we are going to have to modify, uh, obviously, some of this ballast. And then we'll change some stuff around, too. It's not a huge deal because the ballast is easy to remove and then blend back in. And that wasn't too painful. You can see we didn't really damage too much here, but we did remove the ties and we have the section ready to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a Dremel with a wheel and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start peeling away some of the ballast from this area. I'm going to get in between this track here and start cleaning this ballast up because we're going to have to prep these rails out to be able to fit the switch in. So this is very messy and you're going to want to have a vacuum staying by, but I already got a ballast in my mouth without stopping. You just go in, you scrape everything back as far as you need to. Definitely glue this track down pretty well though. And I'm going to start scraping away at the outer part of that road bed to prep for that switch. Drying it away. Whew, all right, that's a messy process and it'll make a lot of dust, but we can sweep all that up. What we're gonna do now is take the switch in here and we're gonna see how much more we gotta clean up here. Uh, it's getting there. What I'm going to do now is take a chisel and I'm going to start peeling back more of this road bed to expose the old cork. That's progress right there. I think we're going to be able to blend this in pretty nicely. I got the road bed pretty well leveled out here and prepped out. I'm going to need to carve a little bit more ballast away from this section here. Uh, and I'm going to have to start pulling out this tie here. That way I can slide in a set of joiners. Uh, the joiners here are going to be able to be saved. I will have to drop in a new set of feeders though. Uh, probably about here or here. That way I can route through that switch and then eventually when I get this turnout in about right here I'll try to drop in another set of feeders. Uh, so we'll have two sets of feeder wires to install for total. Uh, maybe more. We'll see what we need to do here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we can get this tackled before. Um, so we're just going to keep cleaning this up and I'm going to go ahead and start preparing this section of track here by removing that tie. We'll slide some joiners on there and see if we can get this to fit properly. I got it basically prepped out as good as it's going to get, and what we need to do now is prep this rail to accept a joiner. So I've pulled up those ties, and now what I'm going to do is take my Dremel, and I have a little polishing bit on here. It's basically a little wire brush type bit. Turn it on a little bit of a lower, maybe like a medium RPM here. I'm going to go in, I'm going to start polishing these rails up, and I just kind of hold the Dremel like this, get in there, and you just polish that paint right off. Make sure you're wearing eye protection because ballast has a tendency to hop up and it'll hit you in the eye basically every time. Um, I'm telling you that right now. Get this inner rail. Polish that up. There we go. And now we have a polished section of track, so now we can actually slide rail joiners in here. And this will allow us to insert the switch into this little corner. And then we'll have to try to just line the track back up once we drop this in. Um, and it looks like I'm going to probably have to carve some more ballast away here to eliminate this so I can actually fit that in. But that should work just fine if I can do it that way. Uh, probably pull a little bit more ballast off that as well. And just like that, uh, we got the switch pretty much adjusted to where I need it to be. Now, it fits pretty well, but we'll have to put in some track nails to secure it down, because as you can see, it does have a little wobble, and we need to even it out. So, uh, other than that, all I had to do here is I modified a pair of rail joiners for both ends, the new uh, replacement joiners and all that, and I shortened them down, slid them into the rails, and then dropped the switch in, and then slid them onto the rail. That's a super easy way of just grafting the track in without having to completely replace whole new sections. So um, it's definitely something I do often and it makes it a whole lot easier to change your track out. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually go ahead and install those track joiners. Now these Pico turnouts don't have the little holes for track nails. All you got to do is take a little pin vise and I'm just going to go ahead and 
let's do a rail joiner right there. I'm just going to be careful not to damage the tie. I just want to drill a little hole, or at least just get one started like that. I'm just going to try to push it through. That plastic is pretty tough on the Pico turnout, so you got to kind of push through it. On a Code 100 track by Atlas, it's super easy, but that, that was a little bit of a struggle. Got a pair of pliers here with a track nail, and I'm just going to very carefully position the switch here. And let's try to push that nail through and all the way down through the tie. Obviously, we're making sure that we're not, you know, going through another, we're not touching any wires or anything like that because we don't want to short the switch out after we install it because nothing's more annoying than that. And let's go ahead and install another one right there. Just to round this out. You don't really have to drill all the way through it. You can just start the pilot hole and if you push that nail through it should burrow through that plastic pretty well. So let's go ahead and Right, get that in there. Come on, baby. There she goes. There we go. All right. Now, as you can see, it's secure. It's not going anywhere. Switch point's fine. There's a little gap right there. We can fill that in with some solder. And uh, it's pretty much in place. So, from this point on, now what we're going to have to do is peel away a little bit more of this ballast at the leading edge of that curve. We're going to have to level this and cut this out. That way we can bring the flex track in and actually be able to join this up into a whole new track. So we'll basically cut a little square of ballast out, something like this. And now it's starting to really look like a, a proper turnout here. Uh, we can pretty much see where I've reconnected the new track section in and it's just kind of tacked to start. I used code 100 to code 83 transition joiners, that way once all this track is set in place I can just lightly hammer and tap down these rails and they'll blend in so much smoother. Uh, so there'll be a nice smooth transition. Uh, same on this track here. So the trick here is trying to plan out the way this comes in. So in real life, using the prototype photos, the tech basically stays straight alongside the main line for a second but then it curves off at this little corner here to connect into this little crossing and there's actually a bit of ballast over the track so we'll have to make a crossing there and then it curves off and goes around the corner here so we're going to have to try to adjust this track as best I can and this is the part in time where you don't want to permanently glue anything down you just use track nails to kind of get an idea or a feel of where the track needs to go once you get it in place then you can actually start putting in road bed figure out where all that goes the other trick here is that the track itself is pretty much ground level up to this point, but there's a slight gradient that leaves the track starting around here where this connecting switch is. And it goes up and then eventually it's about the same height as this set of track here. So we're going to have to carefully transition that in. And I actually use styrene sheet to make roadbed. And I blend the sheets out and then transition to different sizes until I get the roadbed back level with the ground. So basically, over here we'll have to put roadbed in. At this point over here, this will all be tacked in at ground level and then we'll just simply blend in the track ballast and everything like that with the rest of the scenery. So it's really not that difficult here from this point on. Uh, we'll just get the track in place and then we're going to need to do the track feeder installation and then we're going to have to test all this out just to make sure that 100% that all this is powered in and will actually work properly. Uh, because nothing worse than putting in track and then realizing it doesn't actually run anything. Uh, is what I've pretty much learned with the model road from this point and I definitely don't want to make the same mistakes twice So we're going to be extra careful on this to ensure that everything works properly here on this transitional section Okay, it took a little bit of work, but I think I got it figured out Obviously this scene has to be a little compressed here, but um, I was able to keep the track pretty straight in this section because it runs parallel again with the main line Obviously these tracks would keep going and it would be paralleling this track, but because it's a model railroad it has to curve off somewhere. So the curves are there, but you can see it curves off prototypically over to where this crossing used to be. Because again, back in the 90s there used to be a crossing that crossed all three of these tracks. Uh, but now it's just a maintenance exit that's blocked off. 
and then the track would officially just keep going over and then eventually stop at the end of the layout. So we have the plan figured out. The track is tagged down in this corner, so it's pretty much ready to be glued. But now what we're going to have to do is start putting in some fillets of roadbed to support the track where it basically joins in and keeps that level. So we're going to have to cut pieces of styrene and then glue them in that section and then we'll be able to transition it slowly uh, and then blend it in. So I'm going to be using mostly 040 inch styrene. Uh, it'll be the closest height and if I have to I can add little other little pieces of track. It's just pretty simple, or styrene rather, not track. Basically what you do is you take sheets like this and then if you need to laze them a little bit, you can just take another piece of styrene and glue it on there. And then you just make little fillets basically to just go in the different sections and then blend it out. If we take a look, you can see how I've kind of spiked down large strips of styrene. You can see it creates a gentle sloping transition where we go from ground level up here and then we go all the way up to a gradient where it matches the roadbed on the existing track. Sorry about that, didn't mean to take that out of shot, but you can kind of see what I'm going at here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put Elmer's glue in between these ties very carefully around these corners and then I'm going to put weights on the track and we're going to let this all dry up overnight to set the track in place. And while I'm doing that, uh, once that's all set up, I can actually go ahead and throw in some uh, feeder wires real fast and then I'm going to call it a night for today. Alright, so I adjusted the track into its final position and then I laid a bead of Elmer's white glue across the track to basically put it in place. You can see in the transitional section, there's no glue or anything in between here, it's just nailed down. And then right through here, there's a little bit of glue all the way down the edge of the track there, if you can see. And then I took some of my antique glass insulators and set them on top of the track to keep everything weighted down so that nothing tries to pop up or anything like that. So it's adjusted to a point where once this dries, it will be completely flat and there won't be any bumps in the track work, hopefully. So that's all pretty much completed. So I'm going to let this sit overnight and then tomorrow I'm going to come back and we'll start doing the wiring. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start prepping these feeder wires. Uh, these are the originals. I just pulled them back up and I shortened them a little bit and prepared the ends by cutting them down about uh, a little over a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to take my flux and I'm going to prep the lead wires there with just a little bit of flux. You don't need much, just enough to get the solder to roll, uh, flow better. And uh, let me see if I can get some right there on the rail joiner, just in that little section. And I can get my trusty solder gun and pull that in here. Let me see. So if I can actually find, let's see, what kind of solder am I using here? This is Rosicore 0.062 diameter. Uh, this stuff's worked, uh, it's pretty much worked great for the layout so far. I really haven't had to use too much of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just warming up my soldering gun here. <clears throat> I'm getting it nice and hot. I use a trusty Chicago electric, nothing crazy, but it gets the job done out here. And we're going to pre um, gonna just melt a little bit of that solder on the tip of the blade. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to apply that solder right to the end of my wires in preparation to install them. Just being very careful not to screw something up and damage something. Being that I'm having to kind of lean in the bench work. Okay, so this is the, the tricky part. I got a telephone line right here if you can't see it. So these wires are installed and I'm trying my best not to freaking damage them. It's just really hard getting in here. So what I'm actually going to do is the most risky thing ever. I've actually run my hand underneath the wire and I'm just going to try to solder this in place. I'm going to have to be careful not to raise my hand up because I'm actually leaning on the fence here. Damn. Come on, baby. Come on. And she's starting to go. Get that nice and hot so it flows so we seal that joint. Come on. It's not a very good... Uh, not a very good joint, so let's go ahead and try that again. If you can tell I'm struggling, it's because I am. Okay. Whew. That's not easy, trying to... Whew, 
trying to lean in there and do that. Oh my god. It's got to be done though. And of course the fucking joint came off, so we're going to have to try to do that again. After a little tinkering, all I'll do is just come in here and clean up the joint and just prep it with the file. Get most of that material kind of cleaned off. Make sure that this wire's not completely in the way. And just kind of polish it off. I'll come in. If I can grab it with my Bright Boy track cleaner, this guy here, and I'm just going to clean up that joint like this. Polish off those rails. Later on, I'm going to end up cleaning up this whole section of track because none of this track was really cleaned during the uh, renovations out here. This is one of the sections I didn't get to, but I will be able to get that done pretty quick. Okay. So that's pretty smooth. I always take a spare truck and I'll, I'll generally run it over. I don't have it right here right now, but I uh, generally like to take a small truck or something and I'll run it over these little joints to just check them. But uh, it's pretty basic to solder those in. Uh, obviously I made it look extremely hard because I'm working around all this scenery. But uh, basically we have that lead in place so this switch should be powered into the yard. Now we're going to have to put a lead somewhere around here. Probably going to be around this switch kind of near one of these insulators. We'll just drop them down and then I'll connect it into the main bus underneath the layout. That'll be pretty simple, but that's going to pretty much be it for power. I shouldn't have to run anything down this way, hopefully. Uh, we'll just hope that, that those two feeders should be enough. But if we have to, it's not a big deal. We'll just drill more holes and add more feeders.